So, so this is a, your, your, pa your painting may or may not be at this stage. If you remember for anybody was, who was here last week, I actually kind of mushed this together. This is, this is about a, like a layer and a half, right, of paint on here. And one of the things that, ha and here's the source that we're working on. So one of the things that happen, one of the things that I like to do when I have some time with a painting, so when I go away and then I come back after it's dry, is I very often will start my painting with a glaze. I know, does anybody know what a glaze is? Or does anybody not know what a glaze is? Yes, touch me, you're probably new. Lisa's like, I don't know, I don't think so. So glazing is one of my favorite tricks in painting. Uh, and it can be done many, many times in many, many, and it can, it has many uses. Um, the sort of advantage to it, and so glazing is basically a, a layer of, thin layer of, of paint tinted water, or if you're working with acrylic, like paint tinted, tinted oil or galcad medium that you run over the, you know, over the entire picture or parts of the picture. Uh, it's, it's thin enough that you can actually see the painting through. But what it does is it adds texture and depth uh, to your things. What you can't really do is control it. So sometimes it does good things to your painting and sometimes it does bad things to your painting. But almost always, and particularly when I, my painting is at this stage, because if you can see, I'm trying to pull this guy up so you can see them both. If you can see my original source there, he is much darker, right? Around here and here and down in here. And I've kind of lost that in my first layers. So the first thing I'm thinking about doing is, is uh, a glaze, which will begin to push the darks forward. Now it will also make my lights darker. So I may have to go back in and add my lights, but I like the idea of starting with a dark base. So somebody who knows glazes, is there anybody who has a guess about what might be a good glaze? Any thoughts? I was going to say blue. Aha! I was going to say blue or I was thinking blue or purple. What do you think? Purple. Purple. Yeah. Purple. Let's do purple. You can really glaze with any color. It helps to glaze with darker colors. I mean, traditionally, that's the case. Let's see. I'm going to push you guys. So are we all going to glaze in purple right now? Should we do that? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? I mean, it, it doesn't okay. hurt. It doesn't hurt your painting. And uh, it okay. often adds something to it. And we might even glaze in another color. We'll just see. Yeah, so my idea is I want to bring out, and even though there's no purple exactly here, um, purple will go, we often glaze with compliments. So this is kind of an orange, like a yellowy top. So a purple glaze, you know, purple is a compliment to yellow. So often a, a glaze will help um, uh, create a little bit of depth. Uh, so what do I mean by that? Let me just show you. Um, if you have, where are you? If you have quinacridone or alizar and crimson, one of those two, you'll want to get a little bit of that, unless you've got a purple. If you've got a, you know, if you've got a dioxazine purple, you are welcome to use that. I do not my blue has disappeared. If you don't, you're going to need, so I was actually working on an acrylic painting somewhere else and I, <laughs> I left all my paints across the room. Um, you're going to want, so this is quinacridone rose I'm putting down here right now. Rosé. Rosé. It's the rosé. <laughs> I called it rosé last week. <laughs> rosé. It's the rosé. That's exactly right. I like it. It gives it a party atmosphere. Okay. Where's my ultramarine blue? Ah, here you are. Um, and ultramarine blue. You could also use phthalo if you wanted to, to mix your purple. 
Um, I think though that ultramarine blue, which is a little bit warmer, will suit this subject. And I'm gonna tell you, I don't exactly know what's gonna happen. So there they are. I'm gonna switch to my, I want you also to see my setup. So hang on. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Yeah. Don't fall. I'm gonna add a spotlight. Ha, huh, it's really dark from this angle. Oh, it's cause of that damn light here. Hold on a second, I'm gonna turn it off. It's amazing how bad, how disturbing the wrong light can be. Um, so now you can see my desk and you can see once again, my very big brush here. It's a one inch brush. I'm gonna mix these two together to get a purple. A nice purple color. And then if you take a look over here I'm dipping my brush in the water and instead of wiping it off like I usually do, I'm coming over here and I'm getting kind of light coverage. So if you look closely at the brush, uh, now I have to turn the light on again. Um, I want you to be able to see this. If you look at this brush, you'll see that there's not very much paint on it. Uh, it's just kind of watery. And now I'm going to literally run almost like a filter on a camera. I'm going to run, I'm gonna run that sort of thin layer of purple all over. So as you can see, I kind of lost everything. All my holes <laughs> kind of disappeared. Never fear, never fear as to be expected. Although, what did I do with my, hang on, I need to get a paper towel. Ah. I'm gonna take my paper you towel. What? You dipped in water, sorry. You dipped in water first and then the paint, yep. right? Not the, mm -hmm. not, Always, not the yes, cause okay. you can't Got make it, cause you can't make it. And then I'm kind of pulling, notice I'm coming out and I'm actually pulling out with a paper towel the lightest parts of my painting, which are his head. Ears are pretty dark, the back. So this still means there's little bits of purple in here, which will be really, really nice. So now I have this kind of darker base. I might even go over again with in just the dark parts to make sure I have something that's dark enough. Did you go over the green part too? I did, I did. You did, okay. Yeah, because why not? Okay. Um, I, the other, so you can see that part of what the glazing does is, uh, and I love these little drips that are happening. I think they're really cool. Some people don't like them. Um, what's, what's interesting about the way uh, light plays on an object is that if you've got like, we've got this sheep here next to this green grass, the way the light hits the object, the color bounces around. So there are little bits of green believe it or not, in the sheep. And there are little bits of this purpley brown, right, and yellow color in the grass, just because of the way light reflects. So we can get rid of most of it, but it you can leave this little hint. So see over here, I'm like kind of leaving this little hint. And you, in any event, you can entirely cover up whatever you don't want. Here, I'm kind of leaving that out of the way. So now I feel like I have a darker uh, canvas to work with. So um, 
Tashween, you could totally, yours is purple. So you might try a yellow ochre glaze. That might look really cool. Or a burnt sienna glaze might look really nice. I would start, um, but before you start painting your, your deer, I would start doing that. So Wait, am I, I have pink, so what glaze should I just do purple on pink? How about, uh, well, Paul, I, yeah, yeah, do purple on pink. And I wanted you to get, before you get any further with your painting, I wanted you to add in some of these darker areas because I feel like we lost them in the last, if I remember correctly, you kind of lost them in the last. So, so you're going to do two things. You're going to glaze purple. Yes, whatever color. And then go ahead in with, if you've lost some of your value, now I'm just going in with straight purple. Go ahead in and add dark areas where I've got dark areas. You'll notice this is the darkest parts. See how I'm kind of going back in and re-darkening. So before you get into any variations, make sure you've got these dark areas. But already, I, you know, it's hard to see on the, I'm gonna remove this because there's no real re reason to look at it so you can see closer. There's already some really radical um, stuff texture happening. Uh, what happens is when you glaze like this, the, um, the paint reacts with the brush marks that you already have. So it kind of dips down in and out Right, so it gets darker in some areas and lighter in others, depending on how what your initial brush strokes are, and it just looks really cool. It creates. I like a, this. This is fun, isn't it? It's a little bit controlling. I was laughing. I was, who was I telling last week? I was laughing because I have some wonderful artists who are very control oriented, and I remember one in particular who I tell this story because I love her so dearly. But oh my God, she the look she gave me when I asked her to do this the first time because she had painted a fairly nice base painting. And I was like, okay, you're gonna cover the whole thing with green. And she looked at me like she wanted to kill me. Because <laughs> right? she's like, what's gonna happen? And I'm like, I, I don't really know. <laughs> like something is gonna happen. <laughs> uh, and the beautiful thing about glazing is we can over and over and over again do this. Uh, you will also often find Diana, for example, has very nuanced, wonderful paintings. Often, um, if Diana's like, I've been working on an area and it's a, just a little too bright, um, all she really needs to do is glaze it and push things back. So you can push things back with glazing. You can pull them by darkening and sort of muddying them. You can, um, uh, you can sort of unify something, right? That has all these different colors. So Paul, I want you to mix a little bit of, um, I, want to, I want you to take a little bit of red and green to get your, to, and re-add in these dark areas here once you've glazed. You see how dark it is around the face? Yeah. How dark it is here and how dark it is here. I want you to add those in. You can just block those in. Do you think I'm red? I'm done with my sheep, or should I work a little bit more on the fur? Did you send it? Let's see. I did. Hold on. I did just. Where's my WhatsApp? Let's just see. Oh my goodness! I'm looking. I feel like you know the only thing I think you need to work on, Diana, is this back edge here. It's a little bit too. It just kind of ends and you should have a little bit, see how it's a little bit ragged here. And then there's yeah. a little bit of the leg. So I feel like your, everything is great, but this back end on this side just stops. Okay. So okay. ragged that up a little bit, right? And then I think we'll decide if there's anything else. So you'll see from Diana's picture, if you guys take a look where we're going with this. Now we're going to kind of try and mix some of those curly light locks, sort of like goldy locks into some of these areas. Then we'll work on the face. We'll work on the face after we get a little bit more texture, but I wanted to really, so let's see, what are we gonna use for those? 
What are we okay. using for those? Let's use, let's get some burnt sienna in here. It always goes back to burnt sienna and burnt umber. You'll see, it's almost always. Um, there's a bit of yellow ochre, there's some white. I don't know if there's anything else. I mean, unless you wanna get all crazy like Diana did very nicely and you can add other colors in, which is beautiful. As long as your colors kind of match values that, that works. Um, so you want burnt umber. So besides your purple, you want burnt umber, burnt sienna, some titanium white. And I'm gonna say for the moment, yellow ochre, we might add another yellow in there. Did you say white or titanium white? Just white. Can be titanium or zinc or whatever. Whatever white you got. Whatever white you got. Okay. So this is yellow ochre. Here, I'll take a picture so you can see the palette a little bit better. Uh, you guys are going to see that now the videos are edited and you can actually see the original colors and sources. Are you gonna be weird now? Let's see. Leah? Oh, no, there we go. Yeah. What's a, um, what's a good substitute for yellow ochre? Uh, do you have a cadmium yellow deep? Yes. Use I that. Do. Okay. I think I remember you asking me that last week. Nope, you don't no. happen to have any Naples yellow, do you? I, I do. You could Naples might also be helpful. So you can put that on your palette if you've got it. Naples is one of my new favorites. Here is our palette. Yellow ochre. This is quinacridone red. This is ultramarine blue. Burnt sienna, burnt umber, and white. Okay. So now we want to get back into maybe mixing, mixing a kind of lighter fur color. In most places, this, is, this beast is not white. There's a couple of things we can try. One is to take some yellow ochre. I'm just testing this right now. I'll tell you what works. You can watch me or is to take a little yellow ochre and purple, right? Those are complements. So if I mix them together up too much red. I'm adding a little bit of blue. And then add a touch of white to see what happens when you lighten that. Hmm. Actually, that's kind of pretty. Even more white. A little bit on the red side, I'm adding a little bit more blue. So this is kind of a white, this is a one white whitey yellow. What else would I try? I might try burnt umber. I'm mixing a couple different and all an ultramarine blue and then some, oops, that's not very much. Here, wait, I'll go over here and do that here. Too much blue. Try a little bit of white to that. I'm adding white because always, okay, that's a bit too gray. I don't think that's going to do it for us. Although maybe there's a couple of areas. And then we can try burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. I'm always at, so I'm, you notice I'm never mixing, rarely am I mixing straightforward colors. Almost all of my colors are complementary mixes. Burnt sienna could be red as um, red or orange, which means that the complement could be either green or blue. Just testing here, see what we got. So even though I like both of these. So I have three different kind of light mixes. I'll write them down and take a picture so you can see the difference between them. It's, inter it's interesting how different they are. So we've got 
yellow ochre plus purple plus white. And this is ultramarine blue plus burnt. Um, all of these have white in them, okay? I don't really have room to write white. And this is burnt sienna plus blue. They all actually, you might be able to use them all. Here, let me take a picture. There we go. So you can see this one's a little bit pinker. This one's a little bit sort of browner. This one's very gray. But we might be able to use all of them. Mostly this is the brownie gray. Leah, did so, you use this uh, smaller brush for the darker parts, right? Uh, you can use a smaller brush if you want to, yeah. Okay. Not a super small brush, but a smaller brush. Okay. When you're glazing, and yeah, we're kind of moving into smaller brush territory. I've got this one, little brush. So here's what people, oh, damn it, sorry. Here's what people want to do, and it doesn't work at all. I'm going to show you what people want to do. When you have an animal that's white like this with shadowy areas and an area that's dark with white areas over, this is what people want to do. You're going to laugh. I'm just going to do it over here. They want to put white here, right? And then try to add in the dark like this, right? That's what people want to do. And that looks absolutely awful. <laughs> so, like, but this is what you want to do, right? You're afraid, of, you think, oh, there's just little bits of dark. If I just add the dark in around the white, it'll work good. But that's not actually what's happening. What's really happening is the white is sitting on top of the dark. So for this really to work, we need this dark base like we've got here. See this here? And then I'm gonna lay sort of white swatches on top. See how much better, you have to keep going in. This is wet still. You see how much better it looks to lay white in over dark. This just looks like a fucking piano or something and a, a dumb one. <laughs> like this just doesn't, <laughs> these don't read. So we have like the white kind of, the, the dark can kind of peep in around the light. So that means when you've got a dark area with lots of white fur like this, let's see, wool, you know, right? Let's look at this really closely so we can see. These are almost like sausage rolls of kind of white fur coming in, white wool coming in over the top of this dark. So I wanna start with dark and then I'm gonna layer. And I wanna even start with my darker darks. So I'm gonna come in, let's see. I'll scoot you a little bit closer so we can see here. This anyway looks a lot more like this than what's happening here. We're all in agreement on that, right? I have said it's ridiculous, but it's funny how much we want to do it. So this is how sort of non-intuitive painting is, I think. So I'm going to take my burnt umber and, uh, and burnt sienna and white mix. And I'm going to try laying a few kind of fat sausage rolls, not too many. And not all, and not like, you know, not all like the same shape, the same direction, the same size. But I'm going to start sort of layering in. Ooh. And it might be that I need to go a little darker even. 
up here. I might even need to go darker in some places. So you see, I'm laying these kind of, what I see is, and you guys should look at your source. Can you see these little, there's these little triangles of dark and then everything else is kind of layered in on top. So I'm kind of with my pointy brush, just sort of layering in. Yeah, I like how that looks. It may still be too light, but when this dries, I can glaze this and push it all dark, right? So I can lay this down and then once again, glaze it back. You're so fancy. Who, me? Yeah. <laughs> Aww. I'm like, it's fun to explore with this. Once you really get into glazing, you realize like how much you can do with it, right? And same here, whoops. Kind of taking this kind of light area, fat sausagey rolls kind of coming in here. I feel like that should be like the name of a song. Fat sausage rolls. Da, 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 da. You, you and sausage go together. Fat sausage rolls, right. I'm coming down here to this other I dark. It, I think of sausage. That sounds like how I feel after all the, after this pandemic, spending too much time God. in the house. and Right, eating. fat sausage roll. But I hope you enjoyed every, <laughs> like I always think about it. I'm definitely fatter, but I'm like, I, at least I think I enjoyed everything. So here I'm kind of, um, taking my light and pulling it down into my dark, but also adding a few. So you see how what I'm doing is, we haven't really got to the light areas yet. We're kind of laying down the fat sausage rolls of darkness. You might wanna make your brush wet again. Your paint might be, my paint is all already drying. I have to mix some more. I don't think I have my color right. What What's happening? Um, I had the base. I think I had yellow in there. I had red and white. And maybe I'll put some green in there. Green I, that's what I, I remember. I asked you to do that at the beginning. Put some green in there. That's what I said. Well, the dark part, yes. yeah, the light part. Yes, now. the darker parts. Um, so now I have this kind of texture. This may or may not be exactly what's happening. And yes, what have now I'll have to come back here and lighten this area, right? See how much I can lighten this. So now let's kind of look at some of the light areas. I'm gonna go back to a, a thicker brush for this. I've got one like this. It's not as thick as my other one. And I'm going to add, you know, I still want, I'm going to try a little bit of the purple mix, uh, yellow and the purple mix, but with white added to it. So now I really, oh, nope, that's definitely not white enough. So I'm adding way more white. So you see, I'm really trying to now get this white area here that's next to the dark area and see how I'm kind of scraping. In the middle, things are solid, but as I come up to a dark area, I'm kind of pushing in a little bit. So I want there to be a kind of ragged edge. Easy to go too dark, too light. I got a little too light there. So now I'm coming in here, it's much more yellow. So I'm gonna, and a little bit more shaded. So I'm coming here, but this is still darker than what's happening here. So now I'm kind of coming in here Notice my uh, yellow mix. So see how I'm still doing this. <laughs> it is pretty fancy. I probably, but I mean, this is what I do. I don't like, when I think about it, I do a lot of mucking around back and forth. This area here, 
by his face is quite light. So I'm going back in here. See how I'm kind of brushing that in and scraping a little bit of that light into the edge of the dark. Don't worry about the face. We haven't really done the face yet. I just wanted to get the body. I wanted you to see this idea of how to work the body a little bit more cohesively. This is a great brush because it's got all these like things, these bristles sticking out. So I can get this, I'm kind of doing this draggy thing with it so that you can still see dark layers. And I may come back in here and add a little bit of light. So see now my, now I have a little bit more even texture, but my lights and my darks are still there. However, I probably lost my dark, so I might wanna go back in and glaze again. So I'll let you guys play around with that a little bit and then let me take a look, send over stuff. Here, I'm gonna take a picture so you can kind of see where my guy is right now. Because I haven't worked the face, um, it's still looking kind of flat, but here's where we are. The face is much lighter than every, anything else. And so that's where we're really gonna get our contrast. Oh yeah, Tashween, that's starting to look nice. Lisa R. Okay, so Lisa, I would say now, is, so now you want to start adding in some of, use your pointy brush and add in some of those, this texture in. That's what I'm already doing. doing. Cool. Yeah, Paul, oh, nice. um, you're going to want, I think, Paul, the dark comes all the way down here, believe it or not. It's mostly dark. Okay. So here's my suggestion. My suggestion is to mix red and green and go over the whole body with red and green. Make it dark. And then go over the top and you'll add your lights on top. Okay? Did you just say that's what we shouldn't have done? No, that's what you should do. No, no. I'm saying, nope, that's not what, no, I'm actually saying that's what you should do. The thing you shouldn't do is make it light and add your darks on top. What you should oh, do okay. is make everything dark. This is the glaze, right? I'm saying go back over with full on paint and make it dark, oh. make the body dark, as right. dark as the head. Because otherwise you're not gonna get your, there's dark kind of everywhere <laughs> in this sheep. Yeah, you're right. Yep, I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're always right, Leah. On Darn this, it. on this I am. On many other things, I am not right. But on this, I know I'm right. <laughs> so it's better to go dark. You're saying red and green, right? Yep to make it dark. All right. All right. Okay, so yeah, Eugene, you're in a position. So now that you've started to get your fat sausage rolls here and here, which is looking good. Now I want you to make this area, which is pretty significantly lighter, right? And down here, Start brushing in some sort of uh, yellow and purple and white here, but keep the edges ragged where your where your darks are. Good job, it's looking good. So anyway, there's a lot of back and forth that happens with painting. You go somewhere. I'm really itching to get to the next layer, but I want to see what you guys are going to do first. I don't want to hit you with too much information. I just sent you a new one. Mm -hmm. Yep. So just keep going. Don't be shy. Get your lights in over here. I like how this is okay, starting yeah. to look. Yep. Okay. Make your fat sausage rolls with your pointy, letting some of your dark through. And then I'm even okay. coming in over here because I know the straight white. 
over here because I know that will really push my dark here. See that? Yeah. Yes. I know this is not easy, you guys. So don't, <laughs> don't expect it to be easy. I was kind of fantasizing, Lisa, about coming to LA in like October, or November. Oh, yeah. We have our award gala October 16. <gasps> you can... Oh, my God. That would be so oh, fun. Yeah. <laughs> are you yeah. going to do it? And you guys are doing it, right? Because you should be able to do it by yeah. then. We're we have to do it. We only have one honoree in place, but we have Sanjay Gupta, and he said yes. So I guess. Ooh. I guess he think it's safe then. <laughs> I yeah, mean, we right? can always change. You can safe. always change your mind, right? But you might as well make plans. Yeah. yeah. And then later decide. You can always change your mind later. Like no one will fault you for deciding later. I'm also adding in the kind that's of light. A, that's a good time to come. Then you can have some fun with us. That'd be amazing. Oh my God. <laughs> I think you guys are going to be, really be seeing fun. me sooner rather than later. Let's just put it that way. I'm getting itchy. And then New York is next. So. Yeah, I guess I need to go to Europe. <laughs> do you want to or do you need to? You know, I haven't been back for um, see, I haven't been back since 2004 when my dad died. Wow. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah. And how complicated. That dude was a complicated man. <laughs> but that yeah. was really weird. I bet that was an interesting trip. <laughs> yeah, he was a uh, complex man. Yeah. Well, he died in a traffic accident, so it was like... Oh, my God. Yeah. Even weirder. Yeah, even weirder. Yeah, I bet that's really weird, Diana. I would imagine. Is your mom still alive? Yeah. Yeah. She's, she was here last year just before she left at the end of February, just before the pandem pandemic hit hard. Oh, so good. good. She's only she's only eighty oh, only, but she's eighty one. So she and she's in good shape. Well, I bet. I am not surprised to hear that. Right? How's it going, you guys? Send me. Touch me and I want to send see you what mine. You're I, doing. Don't, I, I don't really like it, but I'm going to send it to you. Yeah. It's a lot of practice, Lisa. This uh, is harder than it looks. So <laughs> don't Dang expect it. to nail it on this one. <laughs> but you want to start adding in your texture. But you see how all of my light texture sits on top of my dark. So my dark kind of peaks around the edges. You're just being a little too, okay, so these edges here, mm -hmm. where the dark meets the light right here, they're too strong right mm -hmm. now. You need lights to come it okay. on over. You need to take your lights okay. in and kind of push up like that, right? Oh. Okay. Get braver, get braver. Uh. It's good. You got to get braver. You got to no, layer more paint. I know. It's it's just a sheep on a piece of paper, right? <laughs> <laughs> you need to it's not hard. worry about it. <laughs> well, it's, right. it's just, uh, it's this is a delicate business. This is delicate business. This is really bugging me, so I'm just going to do it. I'm going to darken under here so I can see. No. I screwed up. What did you do? Uh, I was putting in some grass. And what uh, happened? It just 
turned ugly. Oh, okay. What happened? Did it flatten? Did you get too dark, too light? No, I, I got too detailed. Mm. Yes. So this is the challenge, you guys, all the time. I'm sorry I'm making you explain it, Diana, but I think it's good to explain to people what you mean when you're like, dang, I screwed that up. And uh, it's easy to overpaint. Yeah. Right? So Lisa was kind of suffering from not painting enough. And now she'll probably move to painting too much. <laughs> right? Just like, yeah. yeah, that she knows. So she's trying not to paint too much. <laughs> and that's just how it, it bloody is. Uh, for those of you who are getting tired of this, you can also go around. I'm just thinking I'm going around the edge with my, I'm going to kind of come around here in the edge with blue, which is just blue and white to come around the edge of the top of the sheep. I want a, I want a little distinction here where my sheepy stops and ends. It's bothering me that I don't have, see this like looks better. This part looks better when I have the sky around it. Okay, it's I funny. adjust it a little bit. Let's see. Nice. Yeah, I like it how you got your dark start. Yeah, this little rough. And I like Diana a little bit how this is not what's happening in the picture, but I like how you're kind of um, up here. You yeah. have a sort of that you're fading that edge away. That's a very good decision, I feel. Yeah, no, it's not as it is. In it isn't as it is, but I think it works. It's I like it a lion. I put like a lion mane on him. He is like a lion. He is kind of like a lion, right? And so, and I don't know if you guys see what I'm talking about here, but I'm like, what I'm saying is, up here, if you can look in the picture, it's kind of, although actually truthfully here, this is also fading. This mm -hmm. is becoming like, mm -hmm. so we're ha almost having a lost edge here where this is just this little area here where the, the rough, this sort of dark rough comes up into the sky. And Diana has it kind of disappearing back there. And I kind of like that. I think that's neat. It sort of emphasizes the darkness and also 